So now we're going to talk about file naming conventions. And uh, it's important to be able to name your files correctly. And so there's just a couple of principles, a couple of rules that you have to follow when naming your files. And then that's going to keep everything cool. So the first thing is that all HTML files should end with the .html extension. So sometimes you'll see htm, sometimes you'll see .php or .asp or .cfm, and on newer websites that use RESTful web design patterns, and you'll learn all about that as you go through this course and other courses with me, uh, they might not have any file extension. <laughs> so there's uh, different ways to do it, but right now, where we're starting out, you want the .html file, .html, so that file extension. What is that other stuff? I'll tell you at the end of this video. I'll give you a little anecdote on it. All right, so the next thing, so all HTML files end in .html. That's the first thing. Second thing is all of your style sheets should end with a .css extension. So that's the second thing. Third thing, the default web page for your site, which is also sometimes known as the home page, should be named index.html. So some people will call it default.html or default.php or something like that, right? But uh, at this point, we're just going to call it index.html and go with index.html over default.html. These are just the standards. So index is more popular than default. All right, so default is kind of falling out of favor. <laughs> Index.html is what you want for your main page in a website. All right, and for your main style sheet for your site, it should be called main.css. These are, you know, slightly my preferences, but also this is kind of like the standard convention, what most people do, the majority of people do. They name their main style sheet main.css. And there could be other files with other names, other style sheets with other names, but your main one, main.css. All right. You should also only use lowercase alphanumeric characters for file names. So that means uh, A through Z, lowercase, and uh, zero through nine. Never use spaces. If for some reason you want to put a space between two things, like two words, use an underscore character instead of a space. And uh, when you use spaces, so here's don't use spaces. When you use spaces, those spaces get turned into percent 20. That's how the space is represented by browsers and on the web. It gets turned into percent 20. So that looks a little bit wacky. All right, so don't use spaces. Use alphanumeric characters that are lowercase, so A through Z, 0 through 9. Call your main HTML page index.html and your main CSS style sheet main.css. Uh, all of your HTML files should end in .html, and then all of your style sheets should end in .css. So those are the naming conventions. You can see all that right over here in this sort of right summary right there. But that's uh, that's what you're, what you're what you're wanting to go for when you name your files. So what's up with uh, now that the rest of the story? <laughs> what's up with like files that you see on the web sometimes that are .php or .asp or .cfm? So that's like super old school coding. And when we create websites, uh, there there's code. First, we create like our, our HTML, our document structure, and then we style it with, uh, with our CSS, so separation of concerns, right? HTML document structure, styling the CSS. And so we create our web pages, and then we might want to add some uh, program programmatic logic to our web pages. And so there's two ways we could add programmatic logic to our web pages. We can do it on the client side, and the client side, we use JavaScript to do that, or we can do it on the server side. And if we do it on the server side, we need some sort of a language to when a client makes a request to the server, we need some sort of a language to do the programmatic logic. And uh, HTML and CSS don't do that. And so on the server, there's different programming languages we can use to add programmatic logic. And so what that allows us to do is basically do what Facebook does or any other modern website where a user logs in. On the client side, they enter their username and password. It gets sent to the server. The server then will say, hey, this username and password, is it associated with an account? If it is, let's pull out all the data related to that account. Let's put that into the web page. Let's build that web page on the fly so their username gets put in, 
right? Their friends' posts, right? Their ratings, whatever it is, that all gets built into the web page, data customized to that user. That's all programming logic, right? We could say, hey, if it's morning, say good morning. If it's evening, say good evening, right? We could show that on the web page, programming logic, conditional logic. We could build all that into the web page and then whew, send them that web page. So we create customized, personalized web pages for every user. That's server side programming logic. There's different languages that we could use to do that. One of them, there's several languages out there. Old school languages are like PHP, ASP, right? Uh, CFM. Don't use any of those. <laughs> those are like old school languages. Current popular flavors are like Node, Ruby, uh, <clears throat> Python, you know, Django. So those are current popular server side languages. Node's probably the best choice out of those. Uh, Python and Django would be the second best choice. Ruby would be the third. <laughs> it has some pluses and minuses. I don't care for it. And then finally, the best choice for server side programming is Go. Right, so that's we've already talked about that, and uh, and so if you're doing PHP, you'll have a PHP file extension on your files, and so that's why you see a different file extension. Anyhow, a little anecdote there. Main intent of this video is file naming conventions, and that's right here.